that is all the time we have for the interview with Foreign Minister Marty Natalie Gawa. We have learned a lot about the future of ASEAN and Indonesia's uh, chairs, visions, and uh, future plans. I hope you will turn on the program again. Good night. So, Nikar. The common stability, common prosperity, common uh, uh, stability, and all that. And, and that is why, for the theme of this year's uh, ASEAN Chairmanship, we present ASEAN community in a global community of nations uh, beyond 2015. We see, foresee an ASEAN uh, in the 10 years from now that must speak with greater coherence on a number of uh, global issues climate change, poverty alleviation, development issues, uh, protection of uh, women, <coughs> children, migrant workers. Uh, in other words, this weekend uh, there is a menu of, of uh, issues that ASEAN can rally around at the global level. Uh, I don't speak of uh, a common ASEAN foreign policy. I don't think that's on, even in the long as a long-term perspective, but certainly we must work towards a common ASEAN uh, global platform, a common platform on global issues, uh, because otherwise ASEAN now is a little bit punching below its weight. Mm. You know, I mean, Thailand is a big contributor to UN peacekeeping. Indonesia is not insignificant either. Every country in ASEAN, ASEAN, yes. But we do it in a disparate way. That's right. If we put some kind of a chapeau, coordinated, cohesive, uh, without suffocating the national efforts, then we have a bigger bigger voice in, in global issues. Yeah, what was the reason then why ASEAN did not put up the ASEAN flag? This is one issue that I find very perplexing. Uh, now I think it's about <laughs> the, ASEAN, the ASEAN flag. You mean literally the flag or the... The, but the whole thing, because each, you mentioned quite right, and yeah. each ASEAN country contribute to yeah, yeah. UN peacekeeping. Yeah, yeah. But when you ask member country, can we use ASEAN flag, ASEAN name? Everybody yes. just does it stay. This is one of up. those, uh, one of those comfort level step by step uh, thing, and and uh, we are now beginning to. I mean, I've I've tried in the in the four months that we've been chair to to do precisely that, uh, even at at the expense of lessening one's national identity, or national character, by by putting it in a national context. For example, on on uh, recent problems that we've had. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, with respect to consular protection, uh, we have we are resolved ASEAN countries to uh, help one another uh, protect our nationals overseas when there is an absence of uh, an ASEAN embassy. Uh, that has been declared since some time, but I think it's only recently it has been put into effect. Uh, you know, we look after one another's nationals uh, in these situations, but it takes uh, a great deal of effort, uh, step by step. But it must be purposeful. But one other issue I'd like to highlight while we talk of the global level. In the final analysis, ASEAN must be people-centered. It must be, it must have a real relevance to the old so-called ordinary ASEAN citizen. I think this is a big challenge because we have all kind of, of course ASEAN is relevant to the ordinary citizen in the sense that it has made peace possible for our region. Mm. That is a huge dividend, a huge peace dividend. But beyond that, we must ask ourselves uh, what is the relevance of ASEAN in our daily activities. Uh, and, and this, I think, is the biggest challenge for ASEAN because otherwise we will become uh, an association or even a community uh, that is a bit, a bit distant or disconnected from the ordinary people. How can ASEAN become people center when ASEAN citizens still do not understand each other, yes. quarrel over cultural nincom poops, yeah. and many other things? What do you think? How can we do that? And the worst is that uh, ASEAN leaders refuse to hear the common voice from the civil society. Yeah, How do you solve this? You have just uh, in a very succinct and yet comprehensive way identified precisely some of the problems that we are encountering. But how can you change it as yeah. shared this I, year? I, I think uh, it's about dividend, it's about delivery. Uh, you know, I mean, we have perceptions, misperceptions, often case, but if we can just deliver in a concrete way, 
something meaningful, something direct that affects the ordinary people's living and conditions. For example, ease of travel, mm. ASEAN visa. Why, why not an ASEAN visa? Why, why uh, in other words, not only for ASEAN nationals to travel more easily uh, within ASEAN region, but also for third countries uh, visitors? Right. Someone visiting Thailand has a uh, third country national visiting Thailand has a Thai visa. The visa is like Schengen visa in Europe, yes. equally applicable to other countries. Uh, that is something real. Uh, it's uh, meaningful. Recognition of one another's uh, uh, education uh, standard, common education standard level, uh, etc. So these are the type of projects that we are trying to zero in on civil society. Uh, it has been on and off. We had uh, the last summit when there was a bit of a and Huahin. Huahin, right? yes, uh, yes. when there was a bit of a disconnect yes. in the interaction between yes, yes. between the leaders and the civil society organization. We are reviving that uh, that uh, practice this year. Hopefully, uh, the next ASEAN summit with a different format uh, of interaction. Uh, same interaction, but with a thematic format. So instead of just having the leaders interact with so-called civil organiz uh, CSO, yes, civil uh, society organizations in an open-ended way, we select a theme. Uh, then, uh, for example, this year's theme, if I'm not mistaken, is about uh, health, uh, poverty alleviation, and MDGs. And so the CSOs who will be engaged will be those relevant to that theme. Mm, Instead of, otherwise you'll have a very uh, disparate kind of NGOs having their own uh, agenda. agenda. But if we start step by step, thematic, beginning the habit of a uh, conversation of this type, maybe we can prod things along. Yeah. How do you now, as chair, bridge the gap between regional practice and international practice? I will give you one example. Yes. Universal periodic review. Mm. How can you encourage ASEAN yes. to take up universal periodic review within the ICHA context? We did. Within ASEAN. Within yeah. ASEAN, yeah. Very interesting idea. That is, this is the kind of suggestion. But how, that I mean, how can you... Yeah, well, you, you are aware this has been the entire uh, ASEAN human rights mechanism or infrastructure is still at a very okay. uh, infancy. Uh, only 2003-2004 when we adopted the ASEAN community with its three pillars. Originally, you recall, it was Singapore speaks only of economic community. It was Indonesia that brought the security community with its human rights dimensions. It, it has been about eight, seven years of, of uh, attempt to, to strengthen this capacity. Now we have ITEM. We have had a long debate within ASEAN how to balance between the promotion and the protection. Yes. Indonesia have always been more emphasizing also the protection dimension. Uh, it wasn't to be the last time when we, we adopted the, the tour of the ITEM. But we are ready, we are more than happy to have the protection element including the idea of Universal UPR, right? Universal peer review, part and parcel of uh, ASEAN's human rights uh, mechanism. But we must try to look at the lessons learned at the global level, the uh, experience in Geneva to see that it's uh, worthwhile undertaking. But I think uh, in ASEAN, when we do what we do, whatever is the area, we must try to uh, not to reinvent the wheel and look at other regions' experience uh, at the global level, multilateral, regional level, African Union. Even the African Union already is quite advanced in, in yeah, some of the... Too for us, yeah. They have peacekeepers, yes, they have their own be, uh, yeah. human rights courts. Uh, yes. Too far ahead. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, too far ahead. We will take it one step at a time then. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, tell me, uh, Indonesia has been engaging in all kinds of forum of its own. Yes. You have just came back from Bali process meeting, and you also have Bali uh, Democracy Forum. Can, can you tell me about uh, some tangible progress yes, that you well, have made? Uh, of course, like Thailand and, and like other ASEAN countries, we have our foreign policy extends beyond ASEAN. Uh, you have, uh, in terms of forums, of course, the UN, the key forum, 
and then we have the non-aligned movement which we will host next month uh, a meeting on we have the Islamic conference and uh, other G20 of course as well so we have all of us like Thailand included have uh, other multilateral obligations and bilateral obligations to attend to and, and on top of the, this forum based approach we have also thematic approach uh, you are kind enough to refer to the Bali Democracy Forum mm. which we are promoting uh, the people smuggling, human trafficking angle that we are also promoting uh, uh, they are complementary to ASEAN that is why actually to return back to the, the, the fact that I said before this year the theme is ASEAN community in a global community of nations what we are trying to suggest is that we can uh, make individual ASEAN countries global projection and role to be consistent and in synergy with ASEAN's mm. own role. Uh, Indonesia doesn't want to do the world and leaving behind ASEAN or vice versa. So that is why we are keen to ensure that all these processes are taking place in synergy. No one is being left behind. Uh, it's not at the expense of uh, so that while a country like Thailand is doing the world in terms of its uh, global priorities and projections like Indonesia, at the same time uh, we are also taking with us uh, the ASEAN flag so it becomes a happy uh, uh, synergy. Watching the development, fast moving development in the Middle East, North Africa, yeah. as chair of ASEAN, what sort of lessons do you want to we have? <laughs> <laughs> lessons learned, tremendous lessons learned. I mean, this is a classic issue of uh, lack of governance, isn't it? I mean, in the past we used to think of uh, international issues, domestic issues as being classically uh, separated. But nowadays, uh, domestic governance issues can quickly find uh, international uh, and global ramifications. It happened to us in 1998-99 with the financial crisis, economic crisis, political crisis. It is happening now in the Middle East. We try to share the lessons learned that we gain from our difficult experience with some of our Middle Eastern countries, colleague friends. I'll be going to uh, Egypt uh, next week oh. for that purpose. Not pontificating, not imposing ones. Mm. We will simply, if asked as we are now, uh, we share uh, our problems. Lessons are more to be drawn from problems rather than successes, and we have many of those challenges and problems, and, and we are not shy in sharing them with our friends so that they, they can hopefully avoid those. If you have to give friendly suggestion to our friend in ASEAN, what you would say in the friendly way? Well, uh, as I, said, <laughs> I mean, all of us, uh, all ASEAN countries have resolved uh, through its community building that extends beyond economic community, but also shows socio-cultural and security community. It means that all of us recognizes that uh, we must have issues such as good governance, promotion of human rights, democracy, part and parcel of ASEAN's discussion. Uh, it is done, it is decided, it's no longer for debate, it is time for action. And, and that's what we try to do in the limited time that we have as chair of ASEAN, to deliver as much as possible on the various plan of action that we have promised ourselves to carry out. One more question about the future of East Timor. Yes. Indonesia has the openly support the yes. membership of East Timor. Yes. Does other ASEAN countries share your view? I think this is uh, yet a full debate is yet to be, a full discussion is yet to be had on this issue uh, uh, because we only received the formal application by this Timor let's say about uh, a month ago now. Uh, there will be a robust and, and a good exchange of views, I'm sure. I am not pessimistic that eventually uh, consensus uh, will, will be obtained uh, because uh, naturally Timor-Leste geographically is part of Southeast Asia. In terms of our geopolitical consideration, it's far best to have Timor-Leste construct as part of ASEAN's ways of doing things. And even the so-called economic implications uh, there are ways and means to, to make allowances for Timor-Leste's uh, situation in a way that does not disrupt ASEAN's uh, 2015 objective of ASEAN co community. But when all is said and done, you cannot have an ASEAN community that is prosperous economically, politically, uh, socioculturally stable, and yet we have one country within this big neighborhood that we somehow exclude.
it's just not right. And so we think uh, for those reasons, it's best to have them less in the team. In the so system. economic poverty, uh, lack of human resource uh, in English language should not pose any obstacle think so. no, for I mean, membership. You know, I mean, perfection can be the enemy of the good. Then if you, uh, if you think along that line, uh, you know, all of our countries at one time or the other were, you know, were in a similarly difficult situation. Otherwise, uh, we had your Myanmar in the past, your Laos, your CLMV countries, you know, Indonesia had its own difficulties. But I think those uh, same reasons and facts uh, becomes a, a great motivator. Uh, exactly uh, the right reasons why Timor-Leste should be in ASEAN, so that we can all enjoy common prosperity and common stability to you know, help one another out. If that is the reason why we went to 2015? Well, we would like to have it this year. Uh, Indonesia believes it should be it should be done this year. This year mean being admitted at the yes, summit? Yes, that would be our, our preference, but of course that's a national preference. We need to develop a consensus. But at least, if not this year, at least we can have uh, a roadmap for Timor-Leste's uh, admission uh, adopted this year. You know, the clear benchmark, what needs to have the principled admission, hopefully we can get it this year. So you will have an uh, old criteria or a new one? Because you know, uh, Shadow, this, right, yeah. yeah. But you have a new uh, country yes. that uh, your president has given support. Papua New Guinea yes. have a permanent observer since 1986. Yes, yes. What is your view? Is uh, Papua New Guinea uh, well, part of the region? Uh, Papua New Guinea is quite unique in the sense that uh, ever since its observer status was obtained, it was always with a view to <coughs> remain in that way. In other words, it wasn't a pre precursor. <laughs> Or a step before its admission to ASEAN, uh, unlike Timor Leste, that from the beginning already showed inclination to join ASEAN. Uh, Papua New Guinea is, we have very close bilateral relations. We await whether one day it intends to join ASEAN, but my understanding is so far it has kept its observer status as being its final destination. But if and when it uh, suggests otherwise, then of course we will have to recalibrate our position. But nowadays, you know, I mean, the world is now so uh, interconnected. Uh, you know, of course, we have all these organizations, ASEAN, Pacific Island Forum, etc., yeah. etc. Et but in the end, they are organizations, but it can become obsolete almost overnight because the force of globalization connectivities does yes. not recognize national boundaries. So we must be as agile and as proactive in creating new structures uh, as the uh, trends uh, that is far more far-reaching. I have counted down the ASEAN integration. Yes. There are 1,430-some days left. I better work tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you expect to see when the time goes? What do you I like know, to see that, at that moment? I see. That is actually, you're, you're very perceptive. This is actually the question that I asked my ASEAN Foreign Minister's colleague last time we met in Lombok in January uh, at the retreat. Yes. I asked them what would make the 1st of January 2015 yes. any better than 31st of December 2014. What's the difference? Yeah. That's the problem. That's the challenge. See, and we are we are probably able we are probably able to refer to certain documents <laughs> that we have adopted as a, as a as a minimum, but hopefully by then it's beyond uh, documents. That is why, as chair of ASEAN this year, on top of the usual preoccupations about churning out documents, we are more interested in actually doing things. Uh, even with or without any documents. Sometimes I do things and I say, oh, should I have done that? Is there, a, is there a solid foundation for that? But I thought it was just the right thing to do. Yeah. And hopefully I'm not proven incorrect there. Yeah. But if you use document, the document did not say that ASEAN community begin on the 1st January. It could when be on the 31st December. Could be. At the end. Yeah, could be. At the end. <laughs> well, thank well, you very thank much. You, thank you very much. Thank you. It's thank a you. great interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is all the time we have for the interview with Foreign Minister Marty Natalie Gawa. We have learned a lot about the future of ASEAN and Indonesians' uh, chairs, visions, and uh, future plans. I hope you will turn on the program again. Good night. So, Vikram.